Welcome back, friends. It's Melissa from MelissaEsplin.com and Calligraphy.org sharing with you part two in a two-part series on creative journaling for lectures and events, aka bullet journaling, visual journaling, all those things. So see prior video on equipping yourself with the best tools and how to organize them in the description below. Now that you've equipped yourself with your favorite materials and you have them neatly organized, let's talk about how to juggle all of the materials, listening and writing everything down all while the speaker is presenting and making their point. First, let's get comfortable. Being able to write notes on a tabletop surface really makes a huge difference. If you can write at a table, do it. Otherwise, work from your lap. That's what I do most often. I like sitting at the edge of a row so my writing hand is poking into the aisle. This gives me room to push out my elbow for more comfortable writing without constantly jabbing the person next to me. Or, heaven forbid, the person next to me bumps me and messes me up. So I get a little bit edgy about that personal space. Also, I personally prefer to cross my legs and that gives my notebook a slightly higher perch so for a more comfortable writing position. This goes against everything that Austin Palmer, the father of modern penmanship as we know it, taught, but it works well enough. Now for the actual listening and note taking part. For me personally, I'm no longer attending college classes. Although I hope to be as cool as my 95 year old grandpa and attend college lectures with my own posse when I'm retired. Most of the content that I'm listening to would be considered in the self-help, inspirational, spiritual genre. So these notes are going to look a little bit differently than the ones in the pure informational genre. But you can apply the following concepts to both. It's important to get into the headspace and warm up your hand first. So as, as the lecture, the keynote or the event is starting, I'm warming up my hand by writing any key information about the day and what I'm attending. I'll write the day, the date, conference, session, speaker. This gives me time to explore different styles. And if I'm wanting to make a whole theme about it, say it's the 4th of July, I may be inclined to do stars and stripes everywhere. This gives me a chance to explore icons, illustrations, and patterns that go with a theme. As the speaker starts, I'm putting on my active listening thinking cap to immediately try to connect with the subject of their presentation. What do I know personally about the topic? What are my questions regarding the topic? And what have other presenters or professionals said on this topic? If it's a dry presentation with a presenter that's so-so, eh, answering these questions will better allow me to connect with the material and supplement my notes and, and the presentation with my own personal findings. If it is a jam-packed presentation, however, this is where I need to juggle a little bit more. Hopefully my presenter is prepared with resources and cites them as he or she is presenting. This is where I pull out my phone and quickly type out references or jot them down in pencil in the margins of my journal. During downtime though, I'll search up those references and write down keywords or phrases that tie in with a presentation. Often, if I didn't catch a resource in time, I'll go up to the speaker afterward and ask them follow-up questions. If the presenter offers up a list or speaks in list format, this is also where I'll pull out my phone, write out the list before formatting it all in my journal. And oftentimes, I'll list everything out quite simply in my journal and give myself space to flesh out each listed item and my additional thoughts or resources or sound bites that are pertinent to the topic. When talking about a specific subject or quote, say perhaps like the word patience, try exploring and writing out the word in the middle of the page in a fancy style, and then write the sound bites and advice bubbles and squares like a thought web. Most of all though, my writing and I'm writing things down as quickly as as I really can. I keep things pretty much to two columns on each page and that keeps my thoughts and ideas con contained. Um, overall though, this is not exhaustive of what I do, but it's really a good breakdown to give you an idea of how to write down your impressions and thoughts on conferences and lectures that you attend. My last little bit of advice you are going to make mistakes. You may spell something wrong or you come up with a really awkward layout that just doesn't work. Keep going. 
It's not a big deal. Imperfection is super crucial in exploration. Thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to learn more about how to get more creative with your writing and penmanship, check out my brush lettering and beginner lettering courses over at store.calligraphy.org. Hit me up on Instagram. I'd love to see your progress. Tag me at Melissa Fur. I can't wait to see your work. Until next time, happy lettering.